Okay, boys and girls, we're going to be talking now about generating equivalent expressions. Okay, we talked about the properties of expressions. Uh, we talked, or really, properties of operations. We talked about the parts of expressions. So we know everything we need to know now to generate answers, to evaluate and come up with answers for our expressions. Okay, so the first thing I want we should be able to do is identify if two expressions are equivalent or equal, okay? And there's a variety of ways we can do this. The first way I'm gonna show you is just if you have two expressions that are supposed to be equal and we don't know if they are or not, we wanna check, just come up with a value, uh, a low number, and plug it in and see if they both come up with the same answer. Chances are pretty good at that point that they're equivalent. So let's check. First one I'm gonna have well, let's just do this. Let's um, let's compare several. All right. Let's just say five x plus sixty five um, five times x plus one. We have one plus. Oops, that's a not a plus at all. There we go. One plus. 5x. All right. And then over here, I'm going to write 5x plus 1. I'm going to write 5x plus 5. And I'm going to write 5 times 13 plus x. All right. Now, one of the expressions in this column match up with the expressions in this column. Okay. So I'm just going to plug in a number for x. And I'm going to solve all these expressions and figure out which ones are equal. I'm going to say x is going to equal 3. I usually don't like using 1 or 2. 3 is the first number I'll, I'll usually pick. All right, so here we go. 5 times x, I'm going to say 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 65, 6, 7, 8. All right. So when x is 3, this expression is equal to 80. Okay, so one of these should be equal to 80 as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and solve the rest of these. So I'm going to plug in 3 for x again. 3 plus 1 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So when x is 3, this expression equals 20. All right, so here we got this one, 5 times x, which is 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. All right. So now I got my three values for each one of these expressions using x as the same value for each one. Now I'm going to see which one of these is equal to which one of these. All right, so let's look at the first one. 5 times x plus 1. Once again, x is going to be 3. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16. So you can see those two are equivalent. Now I'm going to plug in here. 5 times x plus 5. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 5 is 20. So those two are equal. Which leaves us to this one here, but let's just check it and make sure. So I got 5 times the sum 13 plus x. So 13 plus 3 is 16. And then 5 times 16, 5 times 6 is 30. 5, 8, when x is 3, that expression equals 80, and then that's equal to that. That's all there is to it. Just find a number that you can plug in, plug it in, evaluate each expression, and then find out which ones are equal. Okay, so in this next example, we're going to use properties, okay, to determine if two expressions are equal. And then we're just going to compare the expressions. We're not going to plug anything in. We're just going to use our properties. So let's compare these first two. 3 times x minus 2. And we want to know if it's equivalent to 3x minus 6. So I'm going to use the distributive property because I got a number on the outside of a parenthesis. Remember the distributive property says that we will get the same answer if we multiply this 3 times each number inside the parentheses as we would if we were to come up with uh, a number here and solve it. So we're just going to do that. We're going to multiply 3 times x 
and then 3 times 2. And you might say, Mr. Bell, how do you multiply 3 times x when we don't know what x is? Well, good question, because all you're going to get is 3 times x. We don't know what x is, so we can't figure out what it is. And then 3 times 2 is 6. So does that equal 3x minus 6? Well, yeah, in fact it does. Those two are equivalent. All right, let's look at another one. 2 plus x, and we want to know if that's equivalent to 1 half times 4 plus x. Okay, so this is the same thing. Here I have an expression that's kind of already simplified. It doesn't get any easier than this. And I have this one that has a, 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 like a coefficient on the outside of parentheses. So I want to use the distributive property to see if I can make this look like this first one here. So I'm trying to get this to look like this, either x plus 2 or 2 plus x, because once again, addition is commutative, doesn't matter what order it's in. All right. So 1 half times 4. If I have half of 4, I have 2. Plus, I can't do anything with 1 half x because I don't know what x is. So does 2 plus 1 half x look like this? Well, no, because I got 2 plus x. If this was 1 half x, then yeah. So in this case, they are not equivalent. All right, we're just going to say not there. Let's look at one more. I got 6x minus 8 and 2 times 3x minus 5. And I want to figure out if these two expressions are equivalent. Once again, this one's pretty much already simplified. I don't have to do anything to it. There's nothing really I can do to it. But this one, on the other hand, I can use the distributive property again. So I distribute the 2 to the 3x, and I distribute it to the 5. So I just multiply the number out here times the coefficient. I can't do anything else with the x. So 2 times 3x is 6x, minus 2 times 5 is 10. So I got the 6x's, but my constants are different. This is a nine, minus 8, this is a minus 10, so... These are not equivalent. And that's all you have to do. You usually can use the distributive property to determine if one or two uh, expressions are equivalent. Okay, now this last section, we're going to be combining like terms. And remember, we learned that in another video. We talked about like terms. Like terms are numbers that are alike. Okay, if you have two constants, they're like. You can, you can combine them. If you have a, a number that's raised to a one variable to the second power and you have another one to the same variable to the second power you can combine those alright so let's look at some examples and see if we can do some combining so I have 6x squared minus 4x squared okay so I have an x I have an x that x is raised to the second power that x is raised to the second power these are like terms I can combine them okay so basically, I'm, I have 6x squareds, and I'm taking away 4x squareds. So really, all I have to do is worry about that coefficient and subtract the coefficient. 6 minus 4 is 2. But I can't drop the x squares because that's part of the, the term. So my answer there is 2x squared. That is as simple as it gets. I don't know what x is, so I can't, I can't evaluate it. All right, let's look at another one. I got 3 times a plus 2 times b, no not b, I'm sorry, 6 plus, and I'm looking around my camera guys, 5 times a. All right, so I need to simplify this and combine any like terms. As it sits right now, I really don't have like terms. I mean, I have the 2 and the 6, but because this is inside the parentheses, I have to use my distributive property first. I have to distribute the 2 to that 6, and then also to that 5a, okay? So I'm going to leave the 3a here, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2 times 5a would be 10a. Now I have all my terms, kind of no more parentheses, so I can see if I have any like terms. I have an a term, and I have an a term, so I can combine those a terms. 3 plus 10 is 13a. Do not forget the a's. And that leaves me with 12. Okay, so I guess what I'm getting at here is that this expression is equal to that expression there. If I were to come up with a value for a, let's say 3, and I plugged it in this expression here and I solved it, and I, I came up with an answer, I'd get the exact same answer here. All right, let me try one more. y plus 11x 
plus 7y minus 7x. So here in this case I have two different variables. So I know right away that I cannot combine an x value with a y value. It just doesn't work that way. So all I can do is combine my seven, my y's and my x's. Now if I had different exponents, all these are raised to the first power, so if I, I can combine them, but if I had an x squared and an x, I can't combine an x with an x squared. All right. So I got a y term and I have a y term. I have one y term, even though there's not a one here, there's one y, okay? And I have seven y, so I combine it and I get eight y's because of that plus right there. If this was a minus, then I would be subtracting. All right, just like I have here. I got an x term and I have an x term and I want to combine them. So I got plus 11x and I got minus 7x. So I have to subtract that 7x from that 11x. So 11x minus, but it, my answer is going to be positive. Okay, so that gives me 4x. So this answer is equivalent to that answer. I would get, if I plug a number in for x and y, I would get the exact same answer. All right.